Hello, I'm Bettina Cornwell, and this is Sponsorship and Marketing, and we'll be talking about uh, leveraging and activation. So this is a um, sport, art, entertainment cause that might be uh, sponsored by an organization, a brand, probably for an engagement or communications platform. And we're asking ourselves, um, in addition to the deal, the amount they put together in a contract to work together, um, what is spent and how is it spent? So leverage is all of the money that is spent in addition to that deal. So beyond the deal, what did they, uh, what does the brand or organization spend uh, on this relationship? And for me, activation is that part of leveraging that is um, sort of promoting uh, audience engagement, involvement, or participation with the sponsor. Not everyone divvies it up this way. I do it this way because um, I like to have two buckets and I need to know um, which one is working and then I might want to do more of that or how they're working together. There we go. So leveraging and then part of the overall spend is this part that's activational with these uh, potential characteristics. So let's step back a moment and ask, why do we want to have leveraging? So why would we um, work so hard? So why leverage? And the answer is in part that I'm going to tell the brand story. I'm going to bring it alive. This is the, the part that the brand is controlling. It's not you know, the, entirely about the, the property. It's how the brand tells the story with the property. As well, defense. Um, so I'm defending against ambushing, right? As well, we want to make sure we have recall, whether it's implicit or explicit, leveraging helps us to uh, be certain that we have uh, recall that we need in the uh, retail environment or later, um, or as a goodwill um, understanding of who sponsored this charitable event. So we can have um, one-way or two-way communication. So one way. And the big one here is the various types of advertising. Uh, we can have traditional advertising, we can have digital advertising, but it's one-way communication that's being sent out. Um, it could also be um, social media as advertising, right? So I, I can use an interactive uh, uh, channel but if I use it in a, a one-way communication, um, it, it is still just, in, a, in essence, advertising on those channels. So one-way communication, and we can also have what people are very interested uh, in these days, which is two-way. And I would argue that your, um, your leveraging is generally um, non-activational, this part is non-activational, and the two-way is the activational because that's creating my engagement involvement or my participation. So two-way, what, what might we have there? Well, at the event, so on-site, we can have all kinds of things. We can have um, hospitality. So uh, people are coming in, being entertained um, in a particular venue that is sponsorship related, sponsor hosted. Uh, we can also have, again, social, but here the social would be interactive. Uh, you might go to a booth, have your photo taken, and then you know, uh, share that photo from the event with some kind of background or interaction um, that makes this a two-way uh, type of communication. We can have um, dem demonstrations or a demo, right? We can have um, also a, a booth that offers a demonstration or a, a product example that is uh, uh, somehow interactive. 
We can also have mediated two-way interactions. So again, on, on social media, it might be through some tech. Um, like a, an app. But I will have to say that having uh, something like this just to have it is probably not what you want to do. You want something that's going to last long term. In marketing generally, like uh, of your audience, 25%, a quarter, will actually download an app or may maybe more for an event app to help them nav navigate or, or to learn about the event or the uh, players or some kind, something like that. But then only about 25% of those that actually download it then use it. So you're getting, you're getting to a relatively small group unless you're doing something so it makes it active for them on a regular basis. Things are happening for the sponsor, connections on the app, uh, and it's, it's a reason to go there and to use it. Otherwise, it comes this you know, sort of haunted vestige that you just want to get off of your cell phone eventually and, and uh, throw away. Okay, so... Um, how do I make this really work in, in an efficient way? Let's take the example of uh, NFL. NFL has a relatively um, adult audience, uh, even uh, half or so of the uh, NFL viewers, uh, fans are over 50. So this adult audience um, is partnered, uh, has partnered for a very long time with Anheuser-Busch and they have advertising, sometimes that's thematically tied to an event such as the Super Bowl, and sometimes which is freestanding but very oriented to the brand using their iconic symbols, the Clydesdale. My, one of my long-term favorites is the Clydesdales with the puppy. Um, but there's an expectation of that one-way communication advertising during the, the Super Bowl. As well at the Super Bowl, you get um, this composite from um, uh, Budweiser. Uh, they have, for example, uh, taken over, if you will, uh, rented out and uh, uh, branded a hotel and uh, hosted a uh, concert around the uh, NFL. And during that time, they uh, offer the hotel to a hundred influencers that then communicate about that event and how it's going. And here's the story. You get then some two-way mediated and you get some one-way. Um, their YouTube channel is communicating about this activity and the composite makes use of this um, experience that is at the event in a couple of different ways. Probably the gold standard of what you want to do in terms of activation. Making something uh, engaging, involving, and where people participate, making it so much so that it becomes a media event uh, on its own. Not leaving it to chance, inviting your influencers and making it happen uh, as a brand in terms of activation. This has been Leveraging and Activation in Sponsorship and Marketing. Thank you.